గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు అశోక ఆన్లైన్ అకాడమీ యాజ్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ అశోక ఆన్లైన్ అకాడమీ ఎడ్యుకేషనల్ ప్లాట్ఫామ్ వీఆర్ సీయింగ్ ది డైలీ కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఫ్రమ్ ది నేషనల్ న్యూస్ పేపర్ యూస్ఫుల్ ఫర్ ఆల్ ది కాంపిటేటివ్ ఎగ్జామ్స్ ఇన్ ఇండియా అండ్ ఆల్సో ఇన్ ది స్టేట్ ఆఫ్ తెలంగాణ అండ్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ సో ప్లీజ్ ఫాలో దిస్ పర్టికులర్ కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ ఎవ్రీ డే మార్నింగ్ ఇన్ ది అశోక ఆన్లైన్ అకాడమీ ఛానల్ యూ విల్ గెట్ ది కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ వీడియో and the same video you watch it why because it contains the analysis part by the evening by the evening you will get the pdf of that particular current affairs topic so anything that is pending in the evening time you just try to you just try to what you call okay uh, refer from that pdf so this will be the schedule morning you will get the video watch the video make a short note then by the evening okay you get the pdf then you just take a print out of it and keep it aside this is how we proceed okay for this particular current affairs program so today let us proceed with the 10th september 2021 current affairs okay uh, program of the ashoka online academy so try to follow this current affairs they will be of very good okay uh, helpful for you they will be very helpful for you why because you will get the information you will get the exact uh, things related with the uh, examinations so people uh, okay who are preparing for civil service exam tp tspsc group 1 group 2 and other competitive exams of andhra pradesh please follow this particular current affairs definitely they will be of great help for the student community so let us start the today's current affairs okay 10th september so today i will discuss about the india's first bullet train project india's first bullet train project okay mumbai ahmedabad high speed rail project so we will discuss this in detail why because yesterday the lnt okay larson and turbo okay infrastructure company limited it has bagged the contract for a particular stretch along this particular metro sorry the bullet train project so lnt has bagged the contract to construct the certain portion of this particular bullet train project so that is the news but the background of the news is the bullet train project of india the first bullet train project of india very interesting facts are there okay let us analyze these facts and how it will be useful for the economic development of the nation and how it will be uh, environment friendly in nature and how much technology is being integrated into this particular bullet train project let us understand in detail okay in this article this is the analytical article uh, related to the mains exam then after this we see the inspire scheme okay by the government of india they will give the manak awards so what is this inspire scheme is all about what are the different programs like we have the seeds program she program aorc program what are these we will analyze here then yesterday the government of india that is the mhrd has released the india rankings 2021 india rankings 2021 so what is this india rankings 2021 so these are the rankings that are given by the government of india to the educational institutions in india that is universities medical colleges engineering colleges research institutions they were ranked based on certain parameters so what is this ranking what is nirf why it is started what is the importance of this let us understand okay then let us understand the uh, invits of indian economy that is the infrastructure investment trust of indian economy concept how it will work let us understand that also so please uh, okay watch the video till the end so that uh, you will get the good analytical content in this particular what you call the current affairs at the ashoka online academy so understand this very clearly these are very very important okay for the today's current affairs examination uh, okay of the day so see here topic is infrastructure topic is infrastructure see here whenever you see the word infrastructure in the syllabus book what do you mean by that infrastructure means see here it can be roads it includes roads it includes railways it includes ports along the coastline of india it includes airports okay it includes okay what you call dry ports in the interior regions it includes what you call the bullet train it includes the bullet train 
and it includes the metro train projects it includes the metro train projects and also it includes the inland waterways inland waterways so whenever you see the word infrastructure it means it can be physical infrastructure or it can be social infrastructure so understand here infrastructure can be physical infrastructure like roads railways ports airports dry ports bullet trains metro trains inland waterways or it can be social infrastructure like schools colleges hospitals okay public toilets okay all the is are called the social infrastructure the part of the social infrastructure so understand this very clearly whenever you see the word infrastructure it means it covers all of this understand this very clearly it's a broad definition so what is the news okay the topic is infrastructure mumbai ahmedabad high speed rail project mahsr project mahsr project also called as the india's first bullet train project india's first bullet train project so what is this india's first bullet train project so understand this very clearly so what is the news what is the news the news is lnt larsen and turbo company it has bagged the contract for the construction of a portion of this particular what you call the bullet train project of india that is the news but you need to go to the background of that particular news that is the bullet train okay the first bullet train project of india so see here this is the uh, map related to the first bullet train project in india so understand here it starts at mumbai the bullet train project okay it starts at mumbai and it ends at the what you call the uh, uh, sabarmati it ends at the sabarmati so this is the bullet train project of india so understand this very clearly so see here totally it is 508.17 km 508.17 km railway track will be there bullet train related okay railway track 508.17 km so the train the bullet train will run from mumbai to sabarmati okay it will run at a speed of 320 kilometers per hour and because of this you can reach the mumbai to sabarmati within a time of just 2 hours which is a time of just 2 hours now what is happening it takes more than 9 hours to reach the sabarmati from the mumbai with the existing railway infrastructure and speeds in india so to for the first time to increase the uh, what you call the for the first time the bullet train project was introduced in india to reduce the time travel between the mumbai to what you call sabarmati so understand let us see these facts total length of bullet train project is 508.17 km so the train will run at a speed of 320 km per hour maximum speed and within 2 hours you can reach the destination that is either sabarmati to mumbai or mumbai to sabarmati understand that very clearly here it is mumbai ahmedabad high speed railway project but the train will be extended up to the sabarmati understand that very clearly when they launched it initially they launched they decided only up to ahmedabad gujarat but they have extended till the sabarmati so understand this also very clearly so see here the bullet train project the technology is provided by the japan and also the financial assistance is provided by the japan so which country is providing the technology japan is providing the technology for this particular okay bullet train projects and japan is providing the finance also for this particular bullet train projects jica okay japan okay uh, bank jica japan bank jica is providing what you call this particular financial assistance to the bullet train project in india now see here understand the bits here what are the bits so this bullet train project it runs through three states so what are these three states okay you have this particular maharashtra then you have this particular gujarat then you have this particular union territory of dadra and nagar haveli okay maharashtra okay and gujarat and dadra and nagar haveli dadra and nagar haveli okay what will happen this particular okay the union territory of dadra nagar haveli okay the bullet train project will move okay understand this very clearly so remember you remember the facts 
ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಗುಜರಾತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಾದ್ರಾ ನಗರ್ ಹವೇಲಿ ಗುಜರಾತ್ ಇನ್ ಗುಜರಾತ್ ದ ಬುಲೆಟ್ ಟ್ರೈನ್ ಓಕೆ ವಿಲ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ದ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ ಲೆಂತ್ ಇಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ಟೆರಿಟರಿ ಆಫ್ ದಾದ್ರಾ ನಗರ್ ಹವೇಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ದ ಬುಲೆಟ್ ಟ್ರೈನ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಲ್ ರನ್ ಥ್ರೂ how many ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ಟೆರಿಟರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಎ ಫೋರ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಬಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಸಿ ತ್ರೀ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಡಿ ಟೂ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆರ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ದ ಬುಲೆಟ್ ಟ್ರೈನ್ ವಿಲ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿಮಮ್ ಲೆಂತ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಬುಲೆಟ್ ಟ್ರೈನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಗುಜರಾತ್ ತ್ರೀ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ನೌ ಸೊ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದಿ ಮುಂಬೈ ಟು ಸಾಬರ್ಮತಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ and the maximum speed of the train is 320 km per hour understand that very clearly 20 km per hour remember this very clearly and the operational center that is the main controlling center of this particular bullet train will be there in the surat it will be there in the surat remember this surat is in gujarat so exactly it is between the middle of the two destinations sabarmati and mumbai so in surat you have the operational control center for this particular bullet train project for example if you take this particular hyderabad metro the operational control center is there in the what you call the nagol so like that the bullet train the entire bullet train project operational control center is in surat remember that very clearly then initially initially the bullet train will have 10 coaches and it can okay accommodate 750 passengers at a time understand that very clearly then over a period of time the government of india will increase the number of coaches to 16 and it can carry or it it has the capacity to take 1250 passengers from one destination to other destination that is mumbai to sabarmati and according to government of india 35 trains per day 35 trains per day will move in one single direction that means from mumbai to sabarmati 35 trains per day and from sabarmati to mumbai again 35 trains per day so like that the bullet train will function and the target year for completion of the bullet train project is 2023 understand that very clearly so right now we are in 2021 okay the government okay is planning to complete this particular bullet train project okay mumbai ahmedabad high speed train project by 2023 but uh, there are various problems for example see here because of the corona situation okay the bullet train project is uh, delayed a bit that is one problem second problem is that the maharashtra state government has just acquired land that is required for this particular project around 10 percentage of the land only is acquired by maharashtra state government whereas the gujarat state government it has completed 95 percentage of the land acquisition for this particular bullet train project understand that very clearly now so we have the doubt whether it will be completed by 2023 or not but still the government of india is trying to okay complete it in the uh, 2023 by 2023 so understand this very clearly so what are the other facts what are the other facts so see here total distance 508 kilometer number of stations 12 maximum speed 320 km per hour time taken is just 2 hours approximately earlier it is more than 8 to 9 hours so see here for the first time this particular bullet train project there will be a under sea under ocean tunnel created for the for the what you call transport of this particular bullet train for the first time under sea tunnel is created in thane creek of mumbai which is of 7 km. So, in the Mumbai, exactly when it comes to the Mumbai, so here in Mumbai, in this map it is not clear, here in Mumbai, here in Mumbai, okay, they will create, there is a Thane Creek, here in Mumbai, just see here, you have a Thane Creek here, so in this Thane Creek, so what do you mean by creek? So, see here, you have land, you have land, this is land, and this is land, and sea water enter into this particular gap, okay so this is called as creek this is called as creek so for the first time they will create undersea tunnel undersea tunnel of 7 kilometers of 7 kilometers the first undersea tunnel in india for 
the this particular bullet train okay from that undersea tunnel the bullet train will travel it will be for 7 kilometers now understand one more thing the national high speed rail corporation limited the national high speed rail corporation limited national high speed rail corporation limited is created as a public company it is created as a public sector company it is created as a public sector company under companies act of 2013 under companies act of 2013 so this national high speed rail corporation limited it will implement the project the bullet train project with the financial assistance of japan and with the technical and technological assistance of the japan understand this very clearly and the importance of this project is 92% of the project is on the elevated corridor elevated corridor so understand this what is this elevator cor corridor it means the train will not move on the land okay similar to the metro train that you see in the cities hyderabad city same the elevated metro okay you are seeing in hyderabad city it is not that metro train is not moving on the land right so same thing here okay the 92 percentage of the project is okay created on the elevated track will move on an elevated track now what is the uh, advantage with the elevated track so see here understand here very clearly the advantage with the elevated track is this now see here understand here according to the indian railways according to the indian railways the rules are saying that if you want to lay a single uh, truck if you just want to lay a single railway track if you want to lay just a single railway track like this in india so the indian railways is saying that okay the land should be allocated the land should be acquired okay of 32 meters width of land should be acquired and both the sides okay whereas for this particular elevated train elevated bullet train project so you will have the what you call pillars will be there you will have the pillars like this on top of pillars there will be a railway track on top of pillars there will be a railway track so just if you take the width okay the maximum land that can be okay taken for this particular elevated corridor is just 16 meters is just 16 meters of land that means what will happen if you just create this bullet train on an elevated corridor less land acquisition will happen and less people will be displaced and there will be less socio-economic problems arising in India and there will be more and more land left for the okay uh, as it is it will be left and uh, they go for the agriculture activities uh, like earlier they are doing so this is the advantage with the elevated corridors elevated corridors understand this 92 percentage of the project is uh, constructed on an elevated cor corridor and see here japanese shinkansen trains so what are these shinkansen trains these are the bullet trains of japan these are the bullet trains of japan so japan is the pioneer in the manufacturing of the bullet trains so from the last 52 years from the last 52 years from the last 55 years the bullet trains were operating successfully in japan with zero accident rate understand that very clearly that is the level of technology of the japan so understand that very clearly japan shin bullet trains are called as shinkansen trains they are running for more than 55 years in the japan country with zero accidents with zero accidents understand that very clearly last 55 years no bullet train accident understand that very clearly and the world's largest capital city the world's largest capital city is there in japan is there in japan its name is tokyo the world's largest capital city on the planet earth okay in terms of number of population in terms of area wise tokyo okay it is okay every day okay millions of peoples okay people japanese people will be transported okay via this particular bullet train throughout the japan country throughout the japan country that's why if you take japan okay the japan is the one of the highly developed countries on the planet earth okay with very less resources with very less amount of what you call the human resources or economic resources they developed okay very well understand that very clearly japan is not a single island japan is greater than 200 islands combined together 
you call it as Japan. But the main four islands of Japan are Hokkaido, Honshu, Sukoku, Hoyoshu. So four important islands are there of this particular Japan, Hokkaido, Honshu, Sukoku and Fuyushu. So four are there. So these four main large islands, okay, in that the capital city of Japan, Tokyo, from where the people will be transported from one place of the Japan to another place every day. That's why huge amount of mobility is there in Japan. People will move from one place to another place for economic activities, for jobs. So what will happen? Throughout the Japan, there is jobs created in the industries. Throughout the Japan, people are available for doing the various kinds of jobs. Throughout the Japan, there are industries and manufacturing units established. So this is how the Japan over a period of time developed and became an economic power just by this particular bullet trains. If you are restricting the mobility, what will happen? People with good talent will be restricted to their own places and cities and they concentrate only on their cities and they depend on only on the economic resources of their cities and over a period of time the regional development or overall growth of the nation will not happen. So the government of India has decided, let us start the bullet train projects. Why? Because India is a developing country. We have a lot of human resources here. More than 132 crore people are living here. And in that more than 65 percentage population is young population. Slowly we are developing our educational institutions, our literacy rates and skill development skill sets. Okay. And technology also we are developing. So in future, if India wants to sustain the and became the, a developed country, definitely we require bullet trains. So bullet trains, they helped the Japan, okay, to become an economic power. Same thing with the China. Bullet trains in China, they helped the China in the becoming of an economic power. Same thing is with the European Union. Okay, European Union also has the bullet trains running between these 27 countries of the European Union grouping. Okay, so all these bullet trains, they help in the economic growth of the nation. That's why they are introduced in India. So this is the background. So understand here the Japanese Shinkansen trains. Okay, the technology transfer is done by Japan to India. Technology transfer is done by Japan to India. And understand here the National Academy of Indian Railways. National Academy of Indian Railways located at Vadodara. Okay, it will... Okay, it will assist the Japanese engineers and Indian engineers. It will work with the Japanese engineers and Indian engineers and participate in the construction of this particular bullet train project. Then second, we have high speed rail training center is located at Vadodara, where in this particular Vadodara of Gujarat, high speed rail training center, here the people who will manage or maintain this particular bullet train will be getting trained. So according to the government of India, Greater than 5,000 staff are required for the successful functioning of the this particular or maintenance of this particular bullet train projects after its completion. So understand that very clearly. And the bullet train project, it will create first undersea tunnel in India in Mumbai, Tane Creek. I told you what is Creek. It is for 7 kilometers. Then understand this very clearly. What are the other important aspects of this particular bullet train? So see here. Now just observe here, just observe here, see here, here the government of India has planned the bullet train project, the first bullet train project of India. Now one more, the problem in this particular region is that this region is an earthquake prone region. This region is an earthquake prone region. Already you know the Buj earthquake. So Buj is here exactly the Buj earthquake of 2001. It is the most powerful earthquake and because of that the entire town of Buj flattened. That means all the uh, houses were just demolished because of the earthquake. Now this train is constructed in the earthquake prone region. Okay. Now if at all some earthquake happens, how to avoid the accident? So that's why this particular train is fitted with the Earthquake detection system. Earthquake detection system. What is this? Very simple. Whenever there is an earthquake, okay, it is detected by the seismometers located in the this particular region. And whenever the seismometers receives the primary waves, okay, primary waves from the earthquake, okay, focus or hypocenter, simply the okay the inbuilt technology will ask this particular bullet train to stop automatically okay without any moving further 
so that is how earthquake detection systems are placed inside this particular bullet train okay project of india okay second is the crash avoidance system so crash means if two trains are coming in okay what you call the uh, opposite direction how to avoid the crash okay how to find earlier okay two trains are finding coming in the same direction and how to avoid the crash this is also equipped in this particular what you call the bullet train project second thing is that the environmental advantage the environmental advantage with the bullet train so understand here very clearly okay this fact so see here i have given a fact here so just there is a research done here there is a research done by the cambridge university saying that to travel a 600 kilometer distance by aeroplane to travel at 600 dist kilometer distance by aeroplane okay the aeroplane will emit 93 kgs of co2 into the atmosphere which is a global warming or a greenhouse gas causing global warming and if you travel by car 600 kilometers the car will emit 67 kg of co2 if you travel the 600 kilometer by your own car now see here if but if you travel by a bullet train if you travel by a bullet train so what will happen is that it will just emit 8 kg of co2 only so see here 93 kg to 8 kg okay so that means if you construct the bullet train projects okay all over the india there is okay the advantage environmental advantage that is you can reduce the em emission of the co2s okay from this particular transportation sector into the earth's atmosphere co2 is a greenhouse gas and causing the global warming you can avoid that problem also so this is the environmental advantage so this is nothing uh, uh, this is all the important points you can get different types of questions from this particular area so understand here who is implementing this particular project okay the national high speed rail corporation limited national high speed rail corporation limited what is the length 508.17 how many states maharashtra gujarat how many union territories one union territory 12 stations maximum speed 320 operational center it is in surat okay first undersea tunnel tane creek mumbai 7.7 kilometers understand this very clearly 92 percent of the project elevated track national high speed rail corporation of india limited okay will implement this project with the technical assistance of japan financial assistance of japan so understand here we will just okay bring the japanese engineers will come here okay they will work with the indian engineers and the japanese engineers will build this particular bring the components of the shinkansen trains that is bullet trains and they will assemble here and the indian engineers will learn from them understand that very clearly okay we are not manufacturing on our own by this time we will learn okay how to uh, bring that particular how to just okay what kind of technology it will have okay indian engineers will learn then slowly we will build this bullet trains over a period of time in future so this is how it is bullet train projects okay in india first bullet train project in india so next okay so just have a look at this map mumbai tane creek virar boysar wapi bilimora surat baruch vadodara anand anand you know right so anand is famous for this particular amul okay amul milk okay understand this anand milk cooperative union ahmadabad and sabarmati so these are 12 stations located in the okay stretch of this particular bullet train projects now let us understand the second topic government scheme inspire manak scheme inspire program is there under this manak awards are given so what is this see here what is the news the union minister of science and technology has presented the eighth inspire scheme related manak awards during a virtual ceremony so what is this inspire manak awards and what is their importance so see here just understand this in a simple manner the inspire manak awards one of the components of the inspire scheme so what is this inspire scheme inspire means innovation in science pursuit for inspired research innovation in science pursuit innovation in science pursuit pursuit for inspired research for inspired research so what do you mean by this particular innovation in science pursuit for inspired research very simple the aim is to motivate the students 
in the age group of 10 to 15 years who are studying in the 6th to 10th classes all over India to become the future innovators and critical thinkers of India. So all the states, whether it is CBSC syllabus, ICSC syllabus, SSC syllabus, it doesn't matter. So students studying the 6th to 10th class, okay, whatever the medium, it doesn't matter. And who are in the age group of 10 to 15 years, they are okay motivated on this under this particular inspired scheme manak awards understand this very clearly okay so very simple just to okay bring the talent in this particular people throughout the india and how they will think and how they will come out with the innovative science related solutions innovative science related solutions okay we will try to okay uh, they will be motivated in the inspire scheme actually it is a very good scheme it is a very good scheme where small children they are coming with very beautiful innovations so understand that very clearly and they are helpful for the future of this particular country understand this very clearly and to encourage them this particular okay inspire scheme manak awards are given to the school children so who is the nodal agency implementing this okay department of science and technology okay and with the national innovation foundation national innovation foundation and an autonomous body of dst both are implementing this inspire scheme and giving the manak awards who are implementing this scheme department of science and technology and also the national innovation foundation under department of science and technology implementing this particular scheme and giving the manak awards understand this very clearly coverage who are covered just now i told you, you know school students school students okay of the classes 6th to 10th class between the age group of 10 to 15 years okay any state any state any board any board okay cbsc ssc icsc okay ssc icsc doesn't matter okay any board and any medium any medium okay any type of school private school or public school it doesn't matter government school or private school it doesn't matter simply these are the people who are eligible for this particular inspire manak awards okay understand this the students between the age group of 10 to 15 years 6 to 10 class all the states all types of boards all type of schools government and private schools remember this you can expect a question who is giving this national innovation foundation and the department of science and technology both are giving this inspire awards what is the goal identify the innovation and also the research bent of mind in the school children of india so that they become the future innovators of india very simple the prize money is given to the students manak awards rupees 10000 is given okay for the best innovative student in india through a competition so direct benefit scheme they will just transfer the money to the student so understand this very clearly so many students many schools don't know that such a scheme is there you just try to be part of this particular scheme if you are watching this video anybody okay so see here inspire scheme it comprises of three programs program number one is seeds program second is she program third is aorc program so what is this programs so understand this these programs some of them are applied to the school children and some of them they are applied to the what you call the uh, i mean the age group of up to 32 years for example aorc program is there assured opportunity for research career assured opportunity for research career so this is maximum age limit is 32 years so remaining these two remaining these two okay they are see here the inspire manak awards 10 to 15 years age group 15 years age group understand this very clearly so like the different programs different age groups are there so understand this so totally three programs are there seeds program she program aorc program seeds means scheme for early attraction of talent for science scheme for early attraction of talent for science under this manak awards are given internship is also given she program means scholarship for higher education scholarship for higher education people who are preparing for the higher education uh, institutional entrance exams they will get the scholarship inspire, inspire scholarship then after higher education people want to do the phds so phds 
AORC program is there. That is assured opportunity for research careers. You do the PhD, we will give the Inspire Fellowship. Okay. You do the PhD, okay, we will provide the job opportunity as a faculty in some of the institutions at the national level. So see here, understand this, it is a very good scheme. So understand here, Inspire scheme. Overall, it is inspiring the students of India. It is inspiring the students of India from the sixth class up to PhD. From the sixth class up to the PhD. From sixth class to PhD, they are this scheme is in, inspiring the students. If you see here, seeds program. So, what is happening in the seeds program? They are providing the Manak Awards, they are providing the Inspire Internship for the school children. Okay from 6th to 10th class school children are covered here 6th to 10th class school children she program okay scholarship for higher education here what is happening 12th class okay that is 11th and 12th class i mean the intermediate students are covered in this particular she program where they will write an entrance exam and if they qualify and get good marks they will get the scholarship for doing their degree for doing their degree or doing their btech or doing their okay medical okay things medical higher education things understand this very clearly and after this you completed the degree you completed the degree now what will happen you want to do the pg or you want to do the phd so what is the option for that guy or that student aorc program assured opportunity for research careers that means they will go for integrated PG after degree or they will go for integrated PhD. Integrated PG plus PhD after degree, they will get the AORC program benefits that is Inspire Fellowship. And after you complete your PhD, okay, you will be part of the Inspire faculty where government of India will provide you the opportunity to be part of any of the educational institution. Understand this, it is a very good scheme where in each step the students in the country are encouraged to be part of this inspire scheme and the government will handhold the student to become at the, at the from the sixth class to phd you can do your okay the what you call education with the help of the inspire scheme how many people know about this very few people know about this people complain that we do not have resources we do not have talent we do not have encouragement my family problems are there the society problems are there, financial problems are there, all the problems are there. But government of India is providing the schemes here. See here, from your sixth class to your PhD, there are already programs are there. You need to have the awareness, you need to apply to them, you need to be move forward in the life. That is what it is. So anybody seeing this video, please share with the uh, what you call parents so that they will also come to know okay these schemes are there my children uh, they can be part of this scheme they will come to know and they will get some what you call the positive confidence in them understand that very clearly so this is how it is okay so this is how it is okay next we will see the education related topic education sector national institutional ranking framework national institutional ranking framework so what is this NIRF rankings. Yesterday, Government of India, MHRD, released the 2021 India Ranking Report, where Indian educational institutions all over India, top 100 were selected in the NIRF ranking. So, what is this NIRF ranking? So, see here, NIRF, National Institutional Ranking Framework. Understand this very clearly. So, it is released by MHRD in September 2015, first time, first time. So very simple, they provide the rank to the Indian institutions, okay, they offer different like uh, medical institutions, engineering colleges, degree colleges, okay, research institutions, okay, all of them will be provided the ranking from 1 to 100 under NIRF ranking framework. First time 2015, who will publish this rankings? MHRD. Yesterday they have released the top 100 institutions in India in 6 categories. So this is the news. So, NIRF framework outlines a methodology to rank the institutions across the country. So, institutions means it is not coaching institutions, it is the law colleges, medical colleges, engineering colleges, research institutions, 
universities. So these are institutions. So the NARF uses five parameters uh, are covered to rank an educational institution. So what are the five parameters? See here, first one, teaching, comma, learning and resources. What is the qualification of the teachers who are teaching in that particular college? Okay, what is the methodology of learning? Okay, for the students adopted in that particular college. What are the resources the college is utilizing? Okay, national resources, global resources, online resources, the college is utilizing. Based on that, they will rank the institution. Then research and professional practices. Okay, how much research is done by that particular college or that particular university or medical college? Okay, and professional practices. That means these research, okay, whatever the college is doing, they become the patents and they become the industrial goods in the markets. So how many colleges registered the patents and they become the professional practices, these patents, okay. Graduation outcomes, 100 students are there in the college in a particular branch of a particular year. How many of them are, okay, clearing in the first class? How many of them are passing? Okay, what is their level of skill set? Okay, how many of them achieved the awards, scholarships and other extra certificates? So this is graduation outcomes. Outreach and inclusivity. That means that particular college, how much accessible it is at the national level or regional level or at the global level. How much inclusivity is. That means different types of people are part of that particular college or institution and doing different types of courses. For example, if you go to Usman University, okay, you have law college, you have arts college, you have the engineering college, you have medical college, you, have, you can do the PhD there, you can do the management and MBA there, you can learn the foreign languages there. That means it is, its outreach is very broad and foreign students also come there to study and inclusivity. That means it includes all types of streams of knowledge in that particular university. You are, people are learning law, people are learning arts, people are learning the what you call foreign languages, people are learning the uh, engineering, they are part of medical college medical colleges is there all this is inclusivity so Usmania University best example perception that means what is the perception of the world about that particular college or institution so whether they recognize it and give respect to it and uh, what you call okay they what you call they encourage it through admissions and motivating the students to be part of it for example, in uh, uh, the people will say that you should be part of IITs and uh, IASCs, okay, like that in the intermediate stage. So that is the perception point of view. So five parameters they will use to evaluate the uh, college, okay, or institution. So these rankings are given to five categories, uh, not five categories, the fifth point. Categories are overall institutional category, universities, they will give engineering colleges they will give management colleges like iams they will give b schools normal colleges maybe degree college or pg college pharmacy colleges they will give medical colleges they will give architecture colleges they will give law colleges they will give dental colleges they will give and research institutions also they will give so these are different categories of institutions that will be ranked in the narf framework so understand this in 2021 Sixth consecutive edition of India rankings of higher educational institutions in India is given. So just yesterday. So for the first time, remember this point, research institutions have been ranked for the first time in India rankings 2021. So if you just see this particular thing, which is the best, what you call the institution in India, educational institution in India, it is IIT Madras. IIT Madras is the best institution in India. So first position in overall category as well as in engineering category for the third consecutive year. IIT Madras is the best what you call the engineering college in India. Even it replaced what is called as the most famous Indian Institute of Science Bangalore. Understand that very clearly. Okay. So this is how it is. And if, if you come to the management IIM Ahmedabad, stop in the management. Okay colleges in India and Jamia Hamard top the list in pharmacy college Miranda College first among the colleges okay fifth consecutive year 
so like that different things are given here iit roorkee first time architecture okay it replaced the kharagpur then if you just uh, go on seeing this particular national law school of india university bangalore first in terms of law colleges and colleges in delhi they dominate the colleges sector okay colleges category okay then iit hyderabad 16th rank which is there in the telangana then nit warangal okay 59th rank from which i belongs to okay understand this very clearly so this is how it is okay so this is how it is okay the national institution of ranking framework so next topic is indian economy topic invits so what are these invits infrastructure investment trusts so what is this understand this very clearly so see here how this infrastructure investment trust will work so just understand here so what they do is different type of people you me okay your friends okay or and foreigners all these things okay we earn money and all that money is pooled and kept in what is called as the invit invit so what is this invit infrastructure investment trust which is registered with sebi compulsorily it should registered with sebi and it should be part of the national stock exchange of india national stock exchange of india you all of you are there you bought the money you kept that money in the invit registered with sebi and registered with national stock exchange of india what will happen after that simply this particular money whatever it is collected from different types of people it will be invested in the infrastructure projects it will be invested in the infrastructure projects like roads construction highways construction railway tracks construction okay uh, what you call the ports construction airport construction like that infrastructure related investment okay your money will be invested in the infrastructure projects and what will happen the infrastructure project will be done with the money that is created with the invits and at the same time what will happen you will get some income you will get some income why because you invested in this particular invest invits and they invested in the on your behalf they invested in some infrastructure projects now what is happening here two things first thing is that the project is completed second thing is that you are getting people who are investing they are getting some extra income third thing is that infrastructure projects they require huge amount of money and that's why different types of people contributing to it will make huge amount of money to it and it can be completed so this is how the invits will work infrastructure real estate are two most critical sectors in developing economy like india understand that as well a well developed infrastructural setup propels the overall development of the country that is true absolutely true infrastructure roads railways bridges metros ports airports dry ports all of them are required for the overall development of the nation so it invits facilitate a steady inflow of private and foreign investments and thereby augment the capital base available for the growth of key sectors in a economy so here nris foreigners and indian citizens also can contribute to this particular invit which is registered with sebi and that invit will invest in the infrastructure projects you will get some rental income or income project will be done so this is how the invits will work so nothing much is there here okay so okay so this is how it is so just read these particular things you will understand some important topics this is inspire scheme we have seen okay bullet train we have seen okay so tomorrow we will meet with the other topics so have a nice day thank you very much thank you for your support i once again repeat please watch the video in the morning and understand the analysis part by the evening you will get the pdf in the telegram groups and whatsapp groups mentioned in the description of the video so kindly subscribe to this channel every day you will get the current affairs thank you very much have a nice day